So this morning, we meet the disciples caught up in their troubled hearts. They're with Jesus on what we've come to know as Monday Thursday, the last time Jesus shared a meal with his friends before his death. And at this meal, Jesus is trying as best he can to prepare his friends for what he knows is coming next. On this night, he tells his friends that he'll be with them only a little longer, that one of them is going to betray him, and that one of them will deny him not once, but three times. But his friends just don't get it. They struggle to understand what Jesus is telling them, and with good reason. They've upended their entire lives to follow Jesus and to imagine things playing out differently than how they thought it was going to be is throwing them for a loop. Following Jesus was to change things. Following Jesus was to show them a new way. Following Jesus was to make things better. And here they are, hearts troubled, a sense of feeling lost, bewildered, and disillusioned, having taken hold. Being caught up in one's troubled heart can be incredibly painful. And the reality is, to be human means that we're going to experience this at some point in our lives, at several points in our lives. Heartbreak happens for all sorts of reasons. The world is a mess right now, and I feel hopeless. Work is so overwhelming, and I don't know how to keep going. My kid is being bullied at school, and I don't know what to do about it. My spouse is sick, and I can't care for them the way I want to. The things I used to be able to do are now too hard for me, and I feel so alone. Things around me look different than they used to, and it makes me uncomfortable. There is no shortage of reasons for heartbreak, and into all of it, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, Jesus goes on to talk about dwelling places and knowing the way to the place that he's going. He says to his disciples that he's going to prepare a place for them in his father's house. And depending on which translation of the Bible you look at, you'll find different ways of trying to depict what Jesus is getting at here. In my father's house are many mansions says one translation. My father's house has many rooms, says another. My father's lodge has room for everyone. Or as we heard today, my father's, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. Now Jesus isn't asking the disciples to move house. What he's trying to get at is a concept of placeness. Whether mansion, room, dwelling, lodge, the Greek word from which all these translations originate is mone, which can be understood biblically as a staying, an abiding, evoking an image that is more than simply a space to occupy, but a place wherein to live out one's life. And Jesus says, they know the way to this place, even in the midst of their confusion and heartache. But Thomas, we might remember him from a few weeks ago, with all his questions, he asks what the disciples are all thinking, what we might be thinking right now. 
We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? To which Jesus replies, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is saying that he will be with them, only it won't be in the way that they expected. Jesus is saying that he will abide in them, in us, and we in him. The very place that Jesus is preparing for all who will receive this gift is his very self. This following Jesus business, it doesn't end, even when we can't imagine how it continues. So what then is the roadmap for the way of Jesus? In a word, love. Rewind a bit from the passage that we heard today, and amid all the talk of betrayal and denial and leaving, Jesus drops a love bomb. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. The way of Jesus is the way of love. Love as an action is the only thing that has ever changed the world for the better. These are the words of Michael Curry, presiding archbishop in the Episcopal Church, from his book, Love is the Way. We know this love in action in Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, God's love in the world. We know this love in action every time someone creates a place for another. Every time we listen to the troubled heart of a friend or a stranger. Every time we have the courage to open ourselves up and share our vulnerability with one another. Every time we look out into the world and see the pain around us and choose love as the way forward. But even when we know the way of Jesus as the way of love, living this out is far from clear-cut. This way, it isn't always easy to navigate. In the First Nations version of Scripture, the way is translated as the path. I find this helpful because paths aren't always straightforward. They can be full of twists and turns, difficult terrain, steep inclines. And sometimes the path, it gets overgrown, and as you walk along, you aren't even sure you're on it anymore. I was out hiking with friends once, and we were on a path with several different routes you could take. And as we made our way along the route we were on, seemed to be a little bit overgrown and less traveled than I would have thought it would have been. And so I wondered aloud if we had taken a wrong turn and veered off the path we had picked to walk. My friend's then five-year-old said, we just need to look for other humans. And as we walked along, we came across other humans. And after a hello and a brief chat, we knew we were on the right path. And we were indeed traveling with others along the way. To me, that's the beauty of the path the marvel of the way. We live it together, not only with other humans, but with all of creation. At our 11 o'clock service, we'll have a celebration of baptism, and the sacrament of baptism is an enactment of living into the way. We gather together and are reminded of God's promises to us and our promises to God. 
From creation we are washed with the life-giving gift of water in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we are marked with the sign of the cross, joined with Jesus, who promises that where he is, there we will also be. God's love with us. Friends, there's no guarantee that we won't feel lost as we journey in the way. And the way of love doesn't promise that there'll be no heartache, nor does it promise a journey free of deep disappointment or incredibly complicated decisions to make as we go along. But when we journey on the path, when we journey on the way together, living into the spaciousness, the placeness that God welcomes us into, that has room enough for everyone. We are participating in the very thing that sustains us beyond what we can explain. We're participating in a shared faith. And turning back to the words of Archbishop Curry, nothing short of faith, in spite of the odds, can stay the course. Faith dares us to believe that in the end, love wins. We can't see it, but we believe it anyway. Let's walk the way of love together. Amen.